Welcome to Corey's Conscious Living. Hi guys. Do you want to be in the cat club? Do you know what the cat club is? Heidi, Cherry and Vea have an exclusive club for members to come and join. It's $7 a month. Every 7th of the month you get three exclusive Heidi, Cherry and Vea stories that only you get to listen to. No one else that's not in the club gets to get these stories, so they're very special. If you want to know more about it, get a guardian or your mum and dad to help you to look at the link below the video to check out the cat club. Namaste, my little friend. Enjoy your story. Are you ready? To meditate with Kari. Make sure that you're laying all still and quiet in your bed. You may have had a very long day with all sorts of things going on. But now it's time to relax your body and let go of your day. Isla was at her dad's house. She'd just settled down, got all comfortable in bed. She had her eyes closed and she was trying to relax her body. She'd had a good day, a really good day, but now she was super tired. When she closed her eyes, she started to think about what would be a good dream. It might be a good dream if she was flying around the moon like Supergirl. It might be a good dream if she was swimming at the bottom of the ocean with a big giant blue whale. She was thinking about it and she thought, hmm, all of her favorite dreams, all of her best dreams, have always been about fairies. In her mind, Isla had a favorite fairy. She was called Esmeralda. She took a nice, big, deep breath, breathed in all the way down to her little wiggling toes, and then breathed out and let her body sink deeper and deeper into a big, soft, comfortable bed. She could tell she was starting to get really, really sleepy. Body started to feel as if it was floating just a little bit. She was so comfortable and warm. All of a sudden, Isla felt a shift, like she'd just finally fallen into dream state. She saw herself in a large canyon. A dad was there and they were both standing in front of a beautiful fairy bridge that crosses the canyon. The bridge was white. It was bright white, sparkly white, and it was made so beautifully. The architecture was so pretty. It was from a fantasy, it must be. Isla looked up at her dad. She felt a little bit nervous about crossing the bridge into the lands beyond. Who knows what's there, she thought. I don't know why I feel nervous inside, but I do. She looked up at her daddy and he took hold of her hand and she felt instantly 
so much better. Isla and her dad started to walk towards the bridge. And as they stepped onto the bridge, there were silvery lights, tiny little glittering lights all over the bridge, like shimmering stars, absolutely everywhere. And having the twinkling lights and holding her daddy's hand made all of her nervousness melt away. She took a big, deep breath in and pushed her shoulders back and started to stand stronger and braver and taller as she carried on crossing the bridge. Step by step, she started to notice something so awesome, so amazing. The lights that were making her feel so much braver and stronger, the closer she looked, she noticed that the lights weren't actually just lights. They were hundreds and thousands of tiny little fairies, all lighting her way. They were flying around and darting and giggling. Just their energy was so calming. She felt very safe and very welcome at the beginning of this journey that she was on. As she looked around, walking across the bridge, she noticed that she couldn't see very much. There was lots of fog. But then, as she made it towards the end of the bridge, the fog cleared as she got to the other side. As the fog dissolved and melted away, she started to look around. There was a night sky, woods, covered in outlines of black trees. At first it looked quite bleak and grey, but then as she started to walk forward, step by step, she seemed to activate tiny little magnificent blooms of pink and blue lights, just brightening the sky sparking up from behind the trees, from behind the night sky clouds. And then the lights would get closer and she would notice that they were pink and blue fairies coming out all over the place. The pinks and the blues glowed so brightly that the night sky turned into a day sky The trees looked bright and green. Everything, all of a sudden, started to glow with magnificent colors all around. She remembered one dream where Esmeralda, her favorite fairy, was talking about this. Esmeralda called it bioluminescence, the light from life. Out from one of the trees, she saw an even brighter light. It shimmered in gold. And from all the other lights around her, this one caught her eye. Her heart started to tingle. And she felt like she had butterflies in her tummy. And that's when Isla knew that Esmeralda was present. Esmeralda flew out of the light towards Isla. Esmeralda, her most favorite fairy, reached inside of a tiny little fairy pouch that she wore around her waist. 
and grabbed a hold of what looked like fairy dust. She flew around Isla in circles, singing in the sweetest voice, sprinkling fairy dust all over her best friend. And as the fairy dust landed on Isla, on the top of her head, over her shoulders, she closed her eyes and let the magic happen. The dust would allow Isla to be able to float and bounce and jump and fly over the trees so that she could go on a very special journey with Esmeralda. The two of them started to bounce and play and then it didn't take very long before Isla was flying over the trees with Esmeralda. Isla said to her friend, where are we going? Esmeralda said, we're going to the crystal cave for a very special surprise. Isla was watching her friend flying so gracefully in front of her. Esmeralda's wings were made of white feathers and her hair was pink. Esmeralda waved her magical fairy stick and her wings disappeared in a puff of white feathers. And just at the same moment, she sprouted butterfly wings with the most beautiful colors all over them. Pinks and purples, greens. Isla thought, one day, I'll be able to do that with my wings. They were flying through the sky when Isla said to Esmeralda, How come I never see you in the daytime? I'd love it if we could spend more time together. Esmeralda said, So many of us fairies are so shy. That's why most people can never see us. We feel safer in dreams. Sometimes, just like you, other children and adults get to have the bestest dreams about us. But it's very, very, very rare that you would ever see us in the daytime. As the two of them carried on flying towards the crystal cave, Isla noticed that lots of the fairies that they were passing had keys on chains around their necks. They wore them like necklaces. Isla asked Esmeralda what that was all about. And Esmeralda said, They're just keys to their fairy houses. The keys are also very magical. They help not only the fairies, but all of the children and the people that they connect to so that they don't have bad dreams. Those key necklaces are very special. A few moments later, Esmeralda announced that they were coming to a clearing and it would be good to stop and take a rest. Isla had completely forgotten once she got over the bridge, holding her daddy's hand, and she felt safe. She'd completely forgotten that her daddy was no longer with her. They flew down, and as they were flying down, Isla could see her daddy was there, in a clearing with a giant wood table, right there in front of him. As Isla and Esmeralda gently landed on the ground, right in front of her daddy, Isla noticed that he had two fairies that were whispering things into his ears. They were flying by his shoulders. Isla walked up to her daddy, about to say, What are they saying? When she noticed, he had his eyes closed shut. 
He was standing there as if he was wide awake, yet his eyes were closed. And that's when she realized her dad was dreaming too. The fairies were asking him to build little houses and other various fairy things with tiny special tools, with wooden handles. He waved to Isla, even though he was dreaming. Esmeralda motioned that it was time to leave them to it. Let's let your dad dream away, she said to Isla. The two of them started to fly back up into the sky. Esmeralda turned around and said, Your daddy will probably forget all of this dream by morning time. But maybe, if he's lucky, he'll notice that some fairy dust has been left on his clothes. As they carry on with their journey towards the crystal cave, Isla looks back at her daddy and sees that he's safe and very happy with the fairies. And she starts to bounce across the treetops and fly high in the sky. Once again, back on their route to Crystal Cave. Esmeralda and Isla had been flying and jumping and bouncing through the sky for quite some time. Esmeralda noticed something fun happening down below and she motioned to Isla that it was time to take another break. They started to fly down into a clearing that opened up into long green grass with wildflowers everywhere. Isla and Esmeralda landed gently on the ground. Isla heard a very familiar sound. <laughs> OMG! OMG, Heidi, this is so nice. I'm so glad you brought me here. Oh, this is so nice. This is the bestest, bestest, bestest place to just lay down and like chillax and meditate and just forget about the rest of the world. Vaya, can you smell those flowers? They smell so nice, don't they? Vaya said, Mmm, they smell so dreamy and sweet and like, like the bestest perfume. Heidi said, Remember, we're dreaming. And because we're dreaming, you cannot take any of the flowers back with you. These flowers are very special flowers and they have to stay in this very special fairyland, in this very special place. So no stealing the flowers, Cherry. Cherry said, Hi, Day. OMG. I would never, I would never, I would never, ever, ever do anything like that. You know I'm a good cat. I'm a good cat, I am. I'm a really good cat. Oh, but this is so nice. As Isla approached the sound of the voices of what definitely to her sounded like Heidi, Cherry and Vea, she was thinking to herself, how, how did I end up in my dream with Heidi, Cherry and Vea in their dream? Esmeralda said, you will meet some very special people here in this land. And these three are very special. Isla started laughing as she moved through the grass. When she got closer and closer and closer, she reached her arms out and pulled the long wildflowers open so she could get to where Heidi, Cherry and Vaya were all laid down on the ground, making snow angels, but they were making wildflower angels. Isla made a sound. <coughs> Hello. Esmeralda was flying close by. Heidi, Cherry and Vaya all opened their eyes at the same time. OMG, Isla, what are you doing here? 
Isla said. I'm dreaming. Yep, I'm definitely dreaming. Cherry said, So are we. We're having the bestest dream. We've been in this field for like ages and ages and ages and it just smells so nice. And it's like the smell is intoxicating to the point where all I want to do is just lay here and make flower angels. And it's like so nice and I just don't want to leave. And I'm going to stay here forever and ever and ever and ever. <sighs> Cherry started snoring really loud and she wasn't pretending. It was like the flowers in this field had some kind of magical effect. Esmeralda turned round and said to Isla, We best get leaving soon because these flowers will make anyone have the deepest, deepest sleep. And we have things to do. Say goodbye to your cat friends. Isla looked at Vaya and Heidi and Cherry it was too late. They were fast asleep, deeply dreaming about wildflower angels snoring away in the flowers. Esmeralda motioned to Isla and said, come on, let's run for a while. Esmeralda just turned and started to run through the grass and the trees and the long, beautiful flowers, and Isla followed close behind. They were running really fast. Really, really fast. There was a clearing up ahead, a lake. Esmeralda just carried on running. Isla didn't even think about it. She just followed and both of them were running so fast they were just running across the top of the lake. Occasionally, Isla would look down. She noticed so many different bioluminescent creatures underneath the surface of the lake. And every time she put her foot down on the top of the water, it would glow really bright blue beneath her feet. The water didn't feel like normal water. Even though she was running so fast, it felt soft and bouncy, as if she was running on the top of pillows filled with thousands of feathers. They seemed to be running across the lake for the longest time, until the lake turned into grass. Esmeralda slowed down and then she started to walk and Isla followed. As they were walking through the grass, one after the other after the other until it turned into many children, were laying down on the grass, fast asleep. Each one of them had their own warm, fluffy blanket that seemed to be glowing and vibrating, making them have the bestest sleeps. As they walked through all the children, Isla noticed that each child had a fairy attending to them. Esmeralda could feel Isla wondering what all these children were doing here. She announced that these children are sick children. Some of them have a virus and some of them have other illnesses. When children are sick in their walking lives, when it comes to nighttime and they fall fast asleep, the fairies bring them here while they're dreaming so that they can help them to heal and make them feel so much better. Isla thought that was so sweet and reassuring. She thought if she ever gets sick in the future, she knows that while she sleeps, the fairies, especially Esmeralda, 
will take care of her and keep her well. The children started to get less and less until it was just one here and there. And then as Merelda walked into an opening of another field, this field had so many animals and people and children. As Isla walked through everyone, fast asleep, snoring away, they were all the same, dreaming, probably the sweetest dreams. But what if they weren't dreaming the sweetest dreams? Esmeralda once again could hear Isla's thoughts, and she turned around with a wand. She passed a wand to Isla, and she kept her wand for herself. She said, touch them gently on the forehead with your wand, and it will give them the most beautiful dreams. Isla thought this was amazing, and she quickly started to touch all the puppies and the cats and the elephants, all of the friends that she knew there that were sleeping soundly. She wanted to make everyone have the bestest dreams. Why wouldn't you? Even animals have dreams. She was trying to frantically touch as many people and animals as she could with her magical wand, gently on the forehead. Always gently. Because we have to be kind to animals as well as each other. Animals have souls. Animals have feelings. She knew all of this, but at the same time, as she was bouncing and running and flying around, touching everyone with the magical wands, it was as if Esmeralda was talking to her inside of her mind reassuring that we should always be kind to all beings, animals and humans, and even insects. Everyone deserves kindness. As Esmeralda and Isla were flying around, gently touching all the sleeping animals and people, on their foreheads with their magical sticks, giving them the sweetest dreams. They both noticed at the same time a crystal mountain there in front of them. Because they were so close and they were such good friends, they both at the same time put away their magical wands, puffed out their wings and started to fly towards the mountain dodging the big, soft, fluffy clouds here, there, and everywhere in the sky. As they got closer to the mountain, Isla noticed that the lights were fairies, flying around, helping all of the children that they were with, and the children that were there were visiting the crystal mountain and the cave down below in their dreams. The children were having their own dreams and they were from all over the world. Isla and Esmeralda gently fly down and land by an opening at the base of the crystal mountain. It looks like a crystal cave. They start to walk towards the crystal cave and it was then at that moment that Isla noticed some of her friends were already there. Malo was there already with her fairy Hazel, and Savannah was there with a fairy named Meadow. They all walked in the crystal cave together. It was this big, giant, magnificent open space sparkling with every color of the rainbow. There were crystals, all different shapes and sizes. Every color that you could think of, 
every shade that you can think of. It was such an amazing place. So magical and perfect. They were all walking through the cave when they noticed at the end of the cave all the crystals had been polished into a smooth, big, gigantic mirror. It must have been the biggest mirror in the entire world. Savannah walked over to the mirror. What was so different, so magical, so astonishing about what she saw when she looked at herself was that she wasn't Savannah her normal age anymore. Savannah looked at herself and she saw herself as 20, 20 years old. She had glasses on and a science book in her hand. Self, she was studying and doing really, really well. She was looking as if she was reading her science book and trying to figure things out. And then, as everyone watched, Savannah's two little brothers appeared behind her, and they were watching their older sister studying away, so proud of their big sister. Marlo walked up to the mirror, and she, too, saw herself as 20 years old. She was standing there, perfectly poised, strong shoulders, and very sporty looking. She was smiling, and she seemed extremely happy. She was standing there with a tennis racket in one hand, and a baseball bat slung behind her, with blonde, shiny hair, it was touching her shoulders and there were so many people watching and admiring her. Finally, Esmeralda asked Isla if she wanted to go to the mirror. Isla stood still for a moment. It was so cool to see her friends and the experiences that they were having. But as she felt herself, she felt shy. She was asking Esmeralda questions. Esmeralda said, just trust me. You will be happy. Just trust me. Isla knew she could trust her best friend. Esmeralda would never do anything to hurt her or stray her wrong in any way. Isla stepped forward and looked at herself in the mirror. Just like her friends, she was looking at herself at 20 years old. As she looked at herself in the mirror, she sees a tall, slender girl, beautiful and radiant. She has shoulder-length blonde hair, and as she looks closer, she can tell that she has some pink and blue streaks in it. When she looks closer at herself, she notices that she has what looks like dirt on her clothes, something. And then she can see dirt on her face, smudges on her face. And then she peers closer into the mirror and notices that the smudges are paint. And she's actually got paint on her face. She's wearing an artist's smock and it's messy with streaks of gold and blue and pink all over it. She must have been painting really hard. The smock has pockets in it, and inside of the pockets, they're full of tools and different things that she keeps in them. In one of her hands, she's holding a screwdriver, and in the other hand, She's reading a book. Yet another skill. So many skills. Over the years, she's learned so many things. As she watches her 20-year-old self, she notices that she spends her days studying, creating beautiful things. She's a very 
good artist. But she's also so much more. Isla watches herself teaching young girls how to do all the different skills that she herself has mastered. Esmeralda flies over to Isla and says, this is your destiny. To be creative. To learn as many things as you can. It's also your destiny to be kind and strong. You know that the more you practice, the harder you try at things, the more you get good at things. Look at yourself, Isla. You're strong, you're kind, you're a happy, creative, wonderful person. Isla looks up closely at herself. And then she waves at her 20-year-old self. And her 20-year-old self waves back and blows a kiss. Isla's heart feels good inside. She's proud of who she becomes. Esmeralda gathers everyone around and starts to sing her beautiful song. She reaches deep into the pouch that she wears around her waist and brings out a handful of her magical dust and starts to fly and spin and twirl all around Isla. Isla begins to rise and float very slowly and gently towards the clouds. She flies higher and higher, closing her eyes, drifting into the misty white clouds up above. She hears Esmeralda say, I'll see you in the next dream. And then Isla gently opens her eyes and wakes up. She lays in bed very still. That was the best dream ever, she thought. The end.